Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairman Smith. Thank you for your leadership on this important issue, and thank you to my good friend, Ranking Member Bass, for jointly ho holding this uh, hearing today. Now in its third year, the Syrian conflict has uh, caused unspeakable damage to the people of Syria. It has placed a heavy burden on Syria's neighbors, like our ally, Jordan, which has taken in over 600,000 refugees, even though it strains the kingdom's security and economic situation. Refugees have also gone to Lebanon, to Turkey, to Iraq, to Egypt. It has seriously uh, jeopardized the safety and, uh, uh, of our friend and ally, the democratic Jewish state of Israel. This humanitarian tragedy has resulted in the deaths of at least 100,000 over the last two years and has forced more than 2.2 million Syrians, around 10%, of the population of the country to flee to neighboring countries, and over five million Syrians are classified as internally displaced persons, IDPs. The situation remains bleak and continues to get only worse with each passing day. Disease outbreaks are rampant in Syria with polio, measles, typhoid, and hepatitis A all on the rise. The children are malnourished, they are not getting an education, and they can be easily radicalized by those extremists who prey upon those most susceptible. Anti-American attitudes are being spread by extremists as refugee camps become breeding grounds for terrorist groups to spread their radical ideologies and recruit young people to join their ranks. The harsh living conditions in these camps also leave women vulnerable to exploitation by sex traffickers, where girls are forced into short-term marriages for money to help support their families. Christian communities in Syria have taken a huge toll in this conflict, as Christians are being targeted for kidnapping, torture, and murder by radical Islamists who hate them just for being Christians, and many of their homes, churches, and neighborhoods have been destroyed. And there is no end in sight. Yet this administration, whose foreign policy has been plagued with inconsistencies and paralyzed by indecision, has not moved to take decisive action. And not just in Syria, but across the region, in Egypt, in Iran, and elsewhere. Time and time again, the administration takes half measures or no me measures, and its indecision has eroded our credibility in the region, has greatly reduced our lever leverage over some of these nations, and it has severely strained our relations with many of our allies. And it has done so all for what? Assad still remains in power, even though he has used chemical weapons to murder hundreds of his people. Extremists still roam the country, targeting those who do not share their strict view of Islam. And yet the administration thinks it would be a good idea to provide arms to those people who hate us as much as they do Assad. So we have sacrificed our standing in the region for the possibility of eliminating chemical weapons, but we still leave the ruthless dictator in power. And no one has been made accountable, not for the chemical weapons use, not for the deaths of over 100,000 Syrians, not for the targeted attacks on Christians or other religious and ethnic minority groups. President Obama took quite some time to get around to the idea that Assad must be removed from office, but now after the chemical weapons use and the U.S.-Russian framework agreement, it seems that the administration's position is now that Assad can stay as long as he plays nice on chemical weapons. We took a backseat to Moscow when it has been Russia who has been backing Assad and giving him the supplies and the weapons he needs to continue to murder his own people. And it is the same Russia that blocked every effort we tried to make at the UN to hold Assad accountable for his action and stonewalls our attempts to prevent Iran from becoming nuclear capable. And now we expect Russia to take the lead and really hold Assad's feet to the fire over his transgressions. What kind of message does this say to the people of Syria who are being slaughtered and forced to flee, or to our enemies, and most importantly, to our allies? Assad must be held accountable, Mr. Chairman, I agree with you. And when it comes to the Syrian war crimes tri tribunal, we must ensure that those left behind uh, for these, uh, those behind these atrocities are held accountable without placing our brave men and women in jeopardy and out of our jurisdiction. I thank the chairman and Ms. Bass for holding this hearing. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair, thank you very much.